Good evening, everyone. It's seven o'clock. Uh, this is a meeting of the Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting school districts business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. There is time for public participation during the meeting as indicated in the agenda. Upon request of the superintendent, the district shall make reasonable accommodation for a person with disabilities to be able to participate in this meeting. Um, call this meeting to order. Hopefully, you do the roll call. Mr. Lagren? Here. Mr. Arnold? Present. Mr. Brugerly? Greater Acts? Here. Mr. Kangas? Here. Mr. Lundy? Here. Mrs. Aguera? Here. Mr. Rafferty? Here. Mr. Watson? Here. All right. Uh, moving on, we will uh, offer the oath of office to our new student rep. And introduce Marty Watson. Congratulations, sir. Now you get to be the official. So, ready? Repeat after me. I do solemn, solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of School Trust Student Trustee. The Office of Office of Student Trustees. Of the Dexter Community School District, of the Dexter Community School District, according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Official. So That's now you got to tell people. Okay. They're never going to be this bad. No, they're not. This, they, they, this is the hardest thing you're going to have to do. So, just want to tell. Introduce yourself, guys. All right. Um, hi, I'm Marty Watson. I'm going to be a rising junior. Um, I run cross country in the fall, the cross country team, and I play on the men's varsity cross team. I was a captain my sophomore year, and I'll be a captain next year as well. Um, I like being the leader and everything. My goal is to be there all three years for cross, but also like cross country my senior year. Which will be exciting, and um, yeah, I just love to be around other people and laugh, and also just to other people be a better place. So hopefully, I can do the best I can to make the school a better place too. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Well, All right. Um, next on is the approval of our meeting minutes. Our packet included uh, meeting minutes from June twelfth, twenty twenty three. Actually, move to amend to add one more action item. That's only to uh, this is gonna, I'm sorry, sorry, John. Sorry, I that the Board of Education approved the meeting minutes as presented. I apologize. So, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of approving the meeting minutes from June 12th as presented, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. All right, we'll move on now to the approval of the agenda. <laughs> I'm actually motion to add one action item, um, add a number 13 for MS, MAS classes. My understanding is you're still being reimbursed by the state for certain classes, so I'd like to have the opportunity for the board members to attend the bridal. For instance, Dan and I were just elected and we both have taken all of our one third classes, so we don't take them. So I'd like to add that as an action item, and I would move to. So on the table right now is the approval of the agenda with the amendment of adding a 13th action item to add um, MASB classes for trustees to take up to 6th of December. Awesome. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the agenda as amended, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. All right, it has been approved. So now we can move on to our budget hearing. At this time, the board trusted will open the hearing and invite public comment on the 2023 2024 budget. Is that you guys? You ready? Or you're like, what? Huh? No. All right, um, seeing no one rushing to the uh, 
podium. We will close public comment on the 2023-2024 budget and move on to school presentations, starting with our 98B data presentation. Our packet includes updated 98B data data. Executive Director of Instruction Brian Brewer will present the info and answer questions. So background on this, while Ryan comes up, this is the hopefully the last time we have to report data in this format. This was a leftover from the COVID funding. Um, so they set up in the state school uh, budget that we would receive or we needed to in uh, Section 98B four goals and they gave us the exact format. The format is for the reporting is not a format that is actually something we would really used practically because NWEA is actually set up to report individual student wise and look at growth by student. Um, it has not been disaggregated to be able to pull the kids that we just had through the first year here or next year, et cetera. So we can only break down the data in more detail. This is the main state requirements. That's the format. So now it's right. Yeah, and we, we've gone over this a few times already this year, so I'm not going to go item by item for all of you, but you're familiar with the graphic. I did go ahead and bolt the furthest column to the right for each quintile. So low, low average, average, high average, and high. You'll see that bolded column for S spring will show where we ended up. Uh, it's nice to take a look at things from yellow and above, being that average 50th percentile, 40th is still within NWA's uh, appropriateness for 40th and 60th percentile being a middle average quintile. Uh, and as Dr. Kimmis alluded to, this was from 98B. 98C, which was a companion bill, also provide us with some learning loss funds. Uh, and that we have been able to do some math intervention as well as reading intervention. Uh, so we did a test pilot with about a dozen kids this spring where they had received virtual reading tutoring. Uh, and then we were able to recruit 40 students to continue that reading tutoring all throughout the summer. Uh, 12 students that did the test pilot this spring while small sample size, uh, they saw 3x growth compared to peers, which is really exciting to see. Uh, so a lot of great uh, benefit from that, and we're looking forward to sharing the results of that 98 C data uh, come fall. Any questions I can answer for you about the 98 B data? If you remember, uh, kindergarten eighth grade, as Dr. Jim alluded to, is our NWA data for math and ELA at the high school because we don't have one test that all students take. Uh, we utilize class grades. Uh, so you'll be able to see there those grades, just as a reminder, are individual or unique grades. So there could be the same student taking multiple math or multiple ELA courses represented more than one time. Uh, these are not unique users or unique students when you look at the numbers in high school. Brief, I know there's a lot of you, Jen. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, I thought that was like, are we having another one? Is this the schools? All right, so uh, number two, all right, so next up we have topic participation. Um, during public comment, each speaker is allotted a maximum of five minutes for a total of 30 minutes unless otherwise notified. Each speaker will be asked to announce his or their name and district residence and indicate if he or she they represents any organization or agency. No person may speak more than once on the same topic during a single meeting. Those wishing to receive a personal response from the board or superintendent must complete a public comment form available at the meeting entrance or on our website. Uh, in addition, as presiding officer, I would like to remind everyone that public comments should pertain to Dexter Community School District matters and concerns related to the operation of the schools or matters within the authority of the board. Those who wish to, to speak shall direct all comments to the board. Um, and not to staff or other participants. Also, speakers addressing the board uh, shall take into consideration the rules of common courtesy. Speakers who make attacks of a personal nature and or who do not abide by the rules of common courtesy will be reminded of Some such rules by the board president or presiding officer. Such individuals may be asked to leave the meeting. Also, please understand that board members do not respond to the comments, but we will listen very carefully and will follow up as appropriate. If there's immediate need for clarification, we will do so after the speaker will have their time. Is there anyone who would like to make a comment? Good, 10 more seconds. All right, no one running through the door. 
We'll move on to our administrative and board updates, starting with the superintendent after this. Uh, first off, we have Elric Turf installed and then motion uh, started the day after commencements and is cruising along. Um, it is really fascinating. They had to adjust it, Craig said today, because then last night we just looked at it and we kind of put her out. She's alternating, and it was winds kicking pretty heavy. Yeah. Um, they're working on sewing in appliance, things like that. Now it's the coolest part to see them sew the logo in. That is fascinating. Um, it'll look great, and we'll be moving on the track after this. Um, if I sound a little bit groggy, it's because I'm a little bit jet lagged. So I just got back last night from the uh, chaperoning our German exchange with um, partner school in Berghausen. We, the last time we had the exchange was in fall of 2019. We hosted the students, the kids had a great time. They were scheduled to fly over in June and then the school got out and then the world stopped. Um, so I put this exchange together back even in my last district brought it here. And it's the first time I ever went, which was kind of cool. I paid for my own ticket. No, there's no question. Um, we're in the process of recruiting for next year. Uh, we'd like to get to 15 kids. We're going to send out some information again this week. The students, the experience that they, they received with us, so they paid for the flight. And then each school kind of works out how we host. So when the students visit here, they stayed with their partners in their homes. Um, they went to you uh, and volleyball game, we got a tour of the stadium. Um, they went to Henry Ford Music, or saw the went to Henry Ford. Um, they went to Detroit. We do, they did a bunch of different activities together. The mm -hmm. parents started to perform this, they started to coordinate a few bonfires and little like Halloween parties and things like that. And the kids really get bonded and they keep in contact throughout the year. Then when our kids visited there, they were. They went some the first days, went up and they hiked in the Alps. Um, they went in over, they visited some castles. They, um, they went to school. School is very different. It goes from 8 a.m. to 1 o'clock, no lunches, there's a 20 minute recess. Um, the classes are all 45 minute teams. The teacher change rooms. The kids stay the same thing, other than biology, art, et cetera. So they go to school with their partners and mostly in English speaking classes, but they did go to some German speaking classes. Uh, one of the days they did, the German students and, they, and our students sat in a class together and had a history of the origins of the Cold War from a German perspective, which if you know the, the origins, it is really the German perspective, how it all started. Um, so that was, that was pretty fascinating. The kids visited, um, um, Munich, Salzburg. They went to a salt mine in Salzburg, which was really that was a cool experience for them. They took a train down, they're about a mile and a half to the ground. So they took a train down, then took a slide down, and then walked more further down. And then they took another slide down. And then they took another train, and then they took a boat. Because the way they extract the salt is they after they carve out the space. They fill it with water and they get to about 30% salt in the water, and then they extract the water. And once the water um, evaporates, then it salt them. So they saw the entire process, which is fascinating. Um, they visited, uh, they did, they went to a castle, another multiple castles. They went swimming, they, they had a great time. The kids, they were crying when they had to leave, the hugs. It, it is such a cool experience for kids. And the concept is there were two countries that work together and they should get to know each other. Um, it, we're fortunate they visited Bakker Silicon there, or Bakker, kind of, which is huge. You know, it's, if anybody's been to um, one of the big like breweries like Anheuser Busch or one of the big Ford plants, I mean, it's like a city. And so on their end is the international headquarters, which they make product. On this end, they have a the North American headquarters. The research and development is in Ann Arbor, and the plant is in uh, Adrian, so it's, that's how we partner. Um, but they're able to see like the chemicals that actually make chewing gum are made out of there. The chemicals that make the plasticity in your mites, uh, some things in your clothes. I mean, it, it's pretty cool for kids to see. It's a great experience. Right now it's two o'clock in the morning, so I apologize.
apologize. I have not adjusted yet. I'll be good in a day or two. So, but it's a great experience. We'll send out the uh, recruitment for next year. We have eight right now. We can double that. Both double it, so we'll get it out. It's a good experience. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Board President update. I don't have any space. It's all good. Um, and then we'll turn to our state representatives. A lot of things happening, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, there were schools out, and I guess you could have but a lot of people are, you know, happy getting out with their summer plans. But there are definitely some things that happen in the school um, today. Um, Dexter actually hosted their first summer program, which is really good. And I think they got a lot of donations for that. And I know that the Red Cross is really appreciative of this help and, you know, like, et cetera. And I think it's a really good learning experience for the kids themselves. Because a lot of NHL kids like help out with the experience. So I think that's a really great thing to dive into just the community we have there. And another thing that we've been doing this summer is um, teaming up with leads and holding and like hosting this thing called Safety Town. And Safety Town is kind of like a free childcare kind of thing where a lot of NHS kids are partner up with the school, obviously, and um, help look after kids throughout the summer because a lot of the parents still need to work. So I think those are some really good things that the <laughs> Pretty new here, so not really. But <laughs> going on with the safety town thing, I know a lot of my friends have been volunteering for that through NHS. I've heard it's an absolute blast for you high school. So I know that's been a very fun experience. What is um, cross country camp? Cross country camp, I believe it is on Thursday. Sometime in like July, you know, like July, maybe July like 16th or something. Um, so yeah, it should be fun up in uh, Camp Deer Trails. Um, I forget which the center five, but it's up near like Hanson, Michigan. And um, I'm really excited for that. I didn't know how it's in the center last year, so. So I don't want to be too far. Yeah, I know. I was thinking of the games out there. We uh, will move on to our consent items. Uh, consent items are typically approved in bulk. In bulk. Today we have. Um, a resignation from Lauren Williams and um, our uh, financial information for the month of May. I move the Board of Education approve the consent item. So motion. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, we'll move to the vote. All those in favor of approving the consent items in bulk say aye. Uh, any opposed say nay. All right, we'll move on to our action items. Our first action item tonight is policy 6325 approved at our May 22nd, 2023 meeting. The board reviewed and approved for second reading several policies that were approved for first reading on May 8th. Policy 6325 was included in the May 22nd packet and meeting notes. This was what was left off the motion. It needs to be approved for second reading and final approval this evening. The Board of Education approved the policy 6325 federal procurement for second reading and final approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right. Um, because these are action items, we'll do a little call. So we're going to vote. Mr. Lovery? Aye. Mr. Arnold? Aye. Reader X. Hi. Okay, yes. Hi. Mr. Lundy. Hi. Samara. Hi. Been approved. Uh, we'll move on to uh, the ratification of the desk code agreement. Our packet included an executive summary and tentative successor agreement with Dexter Education Support Personnel, Personnel Association. We moved that the Board of Education last time was actually tentative successor agreement. A second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I have a question just on the vacation change. Um, just, I just want to understand what is a, a bank? Bank? It's a bank that they said that we hold kids in each day for a uh, long time. If they can screen it. Personal? Is it it's can you share it? Um, we okay. have done that on a case by case, but in general, 
but it's the individuals. So the changes that we are now going to allow them to accumulate. Questions over discussion. Right, we move on to our roll call vote. Mr. Arnold? Aye. Mr. Grader? Aye. Ms. Hankins? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mr. Guerra? Aye. Mr. Alabra? Aye. All right. Uh, we'll move on to action item number three to ratify the WWAD AMA agreement. Um, our packet also includes an executive summary and tentative successor agreement with the Western Way, Western Washington Bus Drivers and Monitors Association. I'll move the Board of Education ratify the dash WWPTAMA successor agreement. The board yes. Some point. <laughs> it's a very long. It's record. twelve characters. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second on that one? I'll, I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? We have uh, several people routes that we have not been able to use and people routes. And for the team recruit drivers, we've taken products from uh, there is a cleanup. Uh, we did this sick day um, added incentive that they didn't take days off and they paid out. Our drivers come to work once they're really sick, they're covered for each other, and we took the dollars. And we're gonna do that makes sense. I mean, we don't want to force them to go to work for ten dollars. Yeah, right. They do them. We don't have any options. For uh, for eight eight dollars short of the year. So it's cost to pay. It's a national problem, right? I'm sure that many cost directors it's a hard it's a hard position to split hours is a equal and you can find a lot of help. And we need that. So our kids get to We've done really well over the years with finding retirees. Um, and now those retirees are starting to retire. So, there's a police officer and auto worker. We've done it really well. Then. Okay. Is there any other discussion or questions? All right. We'll put it to a roll call vote. Greater X? Aye. Angus? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mrs. Clara? Aye. Mr. Lowry? Aye. Mr. Arnold? Aye. Uh, moving on to our fourth item, action item, that is the 22-23 budget amendment. Our packet includes a memo from CFO Sharon Rashke regarding the attached 22-23 budget amendment. Dr. Rashke will be available to answer any questions. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. I see Sharon coming on up. I, I did just want to see if you had any questions, um, but I do see that we overlooked getting the financial narrative and it went to the finance committee, but didn't make it in the packet. It is a packet. Oh, is it? It was, yeah. was it on the agenda? No, I just put it with this because oh, okay. later they go. Okay, so then you have the financial narrative also. Um, but I just want to see if you had any questions on the budget amendment. Well, keep it because you're uh, keep some comments to yourself. Yep. All right, we'll put it to a vote. Roll call. Ms. Kankas? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Lowry? Aye. Mr. Arnold? Aye. Mr. Hader? Aye. Aye. All right, so moving on, we have actually item number five, 2023-24 tax levies. Earlier this evening, the board 
held a public hearing on the 2023 tax rate for all non homestead properties that will be at 18.0000 bills. And the 2023 debt, debt levy on all properties that would be at 8.5000 mills. These levies are described in the attached memorandum from the CFO Sharon Ratchke. Upon recommendation of the Finance Committee, the Board of Education will act tonight to authorize the tax levies for the 2023-24 fiscal year. I move that the Board of Education authorize that 18 bills be levied on non-homestead property in December 2023, and that 8 and a half bills be levied on debt on all property in December of 2024. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? And just a clarifying: there, there's no change to the existing tax structure. This is just a reasonable for recommended system. Yes, correct, and that's what is incorporated into the pending budget. And the backup sheet, the second sheet of that memo I provided, gives you um, the 18 mills and three mills. Um, rollback amounts and projections. So from the whole for the whole 20 years, um, we kind of keep track of that so we can project out and see if we have an issue where we potentially would need to do an override and where we should be in good shape, at least if it's like through the end of the term. But I want to provide that to you each year so you can kind of see what's coming. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions? We'll put it to our vote. Roll call vote. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Guerra? Aye. Mr. Lowry? Aye. Mr. Arnold? Aye. Mr. Greger? Aye. Mr. Pangas? Aye. All right, moving on. Uh, action item number eight purchase Mandarin one textbooks. Our packet contains an executive. Yeah. Oh, we have a bunch of textbooks. Sorry, I went way. all the way. Yeah. I'm on six. I'll take the couple. I think they can be tracked. That's what's funny. Um, all right, sorry, 2023-24 budget adoption. Our packet contains the final 2023-2024 budget recommendations from CFO Chair and RSD. These are presented to the Board of Education for approval. Um, there's a proposed 2023-24 budget be adopted. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Um, at the last meeting, we talked about budget and staffing changes if necessary based on um, we were able to use our ESSER funds, our stimulus funds, to be able to keep class sizes low and fund several grant funded support positions. Um, those funds have since run out. So we are in, in addition, we have changes in enrollment. Um, it looks like the Development on Jackson and Baker will kick in for kids a year from now, but the next year we we have several changes that we need to adjust. Um, this budget does reflect a lump sum of changes of just over 14 MTE uh, reductions um, to address what is the grant positions that are no longer funded and the work within contractual class size. Our elementary class size is going to be small. Or to other districts in our numbers that we have in the contracts. So we've always held small class sizes for Virginia State for reasons great, but smaller. Um, it reflects the, the down numbers of that. So we were doing elementary sections and changes the special schedules names and then down those out. Um, but the amendment for this year is better than what we were thinking, but next year it's uh this gets it a little, little lower. Um, we were originally starting at four million. It gets it to two point one expense over revenue. And that's with a lot of assumptions. We don't have a state budget yet, so we're just guessing, educated guesses based on what we're going to receive for people. And we want the hard people to help. We use the Middle City's calculations and our own friends to pick a cal calculation that showed us pretty flat. This is our best guess space going into the next year. And uh, in November, we'll really have the two operating budget, the unknowings, and placement of employees and all is real. So we have something to manage. 
66 million uh, academic staff of TE. Is that based on what you like to have for full staff positions, or is that based on? Actually, the 266 was this year. Actually, so I like the actuals for this year. I, mean, I don't I don't know what the total for next year. We'll we'll update that in the November revision based on how many we've actually had. And some of it is directly driven by uh class sizes and um contractual rates or contractual numbers. So for example, if it's let's say second grade to the year is more broad, but so if you get to 20th. Or then we need to add a section by one bed that'll cut in. It, that's the end right now. It's paid down to 14. Something up the great contraction of three years. Yeah, I mean, All right. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Zawira? Aye. 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 All right, we'll move on to action item number seven, our second reading for policies. At our June 12th meeting, uh, the re we reviewed and approved for first reading the following policies 7540.02, web accessibility, 754. 0 0.03 student technology acceptable use and safety, 7540.04 staff technology acceptable use and safety, 7544 social media, 8300 continuity of organizational operations plan, 8305 information security, 8315 information management, and 8400 school safety information. These are presented for second reading and final approval this evening. I move that the Board of Education approve the attached policies 7540.02, 7540.03, 7540.04, 7540.05, 7540.06, 7540.07, 7540.08, 7540.09, 7540.10, 7540.11, 7540.12, 7540.13, 7540.14, 7540.15, 7540.16, 7540.17, 7540.18, 7540.19, 7540.20, 7540.21, 7540.22, 7540.23, 7540.24, 7540.25, 7540.26, 7540.27, 7540.28, 7540.29, 7540.30, 7540.31, 7540.32, 7540.33, 7540.34, 7540.35, 7540.36, 7540.37, 7540.38, 7540.39, 7540.40, 7540.41, 7540.42, 7540.43, 7540.44, 7540.45, 7540.46, 7540.47, 7540.48, 7540.49, 7540.50, 7540.51, 7540.52, 7540.53, 7540.54, 7540.55, 7540.56, 7540.57, 7540.58, 7540.59, 7540.60, 7540.61, 7540.62, 7540.63, 7540.64, 7540.65, 7540.66, 7540.67, 7540.68, 7540.69, 7540.70, 7540.71, 7540.72, 7540.73, 7540.74, 7540.75, 7540.76, 7540.77, 7540.78, 7540.79, 7540.80, 7540.81, 7540.82, 7540.83, 7540.84, 7540.85, 7540.86, 7540.87, 7540.88, 7540.89, 7540.90, 7540.91, 7540.92, 7540.93, 7540.94, 7540.95, 7540.96, 7540.97, 7540.98, 7540.99, 7540.10, 7540.11, 7540.12, 7540.13, 7540.14, 7540.15, 7540.16, 7540.17, 7540.18, 7540.19, 7540.20, 7540.21, 7540.22, 7540.23, 7540.24, 7540.25, 7540.26, 7540.27, 7540.28, 7540.29, 7540.30, 7540.31, 7540.32, 7540.33, 7540.34, 7540.35, 7540.36, 7540.37, 7540.38, 7540.39, 7540.40, 7540.41, 7540.42, 7540.43, 7540.44, 7540.45, 7540.46, 7540.47, 7540.48, 7540.49, 7540.51, 7540.52, 7540.53, 7540.54, 7540.55, 7540.56, 7540.57, 7540.58, 7540.59, 7540.60, 7540.61, 7540.62, 7540.63, 7540.64, 7540.65, 7540.66, 7540.67, 7540.68, 7540.69, 7540.70, 7540.71, 7540.72, 7540.73, 7540.74, 7540.75, 7540.76, 7540.77, 7540.78, 7540.79, 7540.80, 7540.81, 7540.82, 7540.83, 7540.84, 7540.85, 7540.86, 7540.87, 7540.88, 7540.89, 7540.90, 7540.91, 7540.92, 7540.93, 7540.94, 7540.95, 7540.96, 7540.97, 7540.98, 7540.99, 7540.100, 7540.101, 7540.102, 7540.103, 7540.104, 7540.105, 7540.106, 7540.107, 7540.108, 7540.109, 7540.110, 7540.111, 7540.112, 7540.113, 7540.114, 7540.115, 7540.116, 7540.117, 7540.118, 7540.129, 7540.130, 7540.131, 7540.132, 7540.133, 7540.134, 7540.135, 7540.136, 7540.137, 7540.138, 7540.139, 7540.140, 7540.151, 7540.152, 7540.153, 7540.154, 7540.155, 7540.156, 7540.157, 7540.158, 7540.159, 7540.160, 7540.171, 7540.172, 7540.173, 7540.174, 7540.175, 7540.176, 7540.177, 7540.178, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.179, 7540.
you will put it to a roll call vote. Mr. Arnold? Aye. Mr. Drainerex? Aye. Mr. Angus? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mr. Moira? Aye. Mr. Lavre? Aye. All right, moving on to number nine. Purchase big ideas map textbooks. Our packet contains an executive summary regarding the purchase of updated big ideas map digital textbooks for DHS pre-calculus, calculus, algebra one, geometry, and algebra two classes. I move that the Board of Education approve the purchase of a seven-year license to update the big ideas map digital textbooks for the total cost not to exceed three million dollars. I'll second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. In 2017, we purchased a new textbook for big, big ideas in high school then. Um, at that time, we purchased about half the number of textbooks we needed, and then the other half of digital was covered by digital licenses. The kids have, it's been a transition over time. The kids really, you take your math book home, or you can start. I didn't even have one. Didn't even know they exist. Yeah, I don't know anybody exists because they just log on. And <laughs> out. So, what used to happen with textbooks is every every five to seven years, you spend a quarter of a million dollars to update textbooks. Now they built the model that you can spend one hundred twenty thousand every so many years to update the software um, and the access. The best pricing will. Mr. Bruder looked at all the options for pricing annual monthly year and went through with Sharon. Yeah, Sharon and I have been working on it. Uh, we'll be paying annually, and every every year we do have an opportunity to say, you know, thank you, we're going to move on. Uh, we don't anticipate that. We really like the resource. The math department fully enforces it, uh, but we do have that out as a possibility. So we aren't stuck with a hundred twenty thousand dollar bill if, for whatever reason, year three, four, five, something on their end or our end changes. Uh, we've been able to, to essentially sign seven-year contract that are one-year payments, annual payments. So how many copies of actual textbooks will we have last week? Uh, the same number that we currently have. The new purchase will not include any new textbooks. Uh, the math department and we looked, we talked to our media specialists, they're not checked out. Uh, so we're able, actually able to update the digital content to the newest edition without updating the textbook because they're so similar. Uh, so we'll still have that half number. Uh, so we'll have a couple hundred textbooks available for students that would like to use one. Uh, but as Dr. Jones alluded to, and as students shared, they're all using the digital base. And you'll still have that opportunity. You'll still have that opportunity. I'm very glad you checked out. Well, in the geometry, they had a word that came home, but it was, half, it was cut in half, like it was and a half. They got to bring home half. And they and so, yeah, they're not good shape. Um, so I was just curious on that because it's, I know different kids learn differently. Some have, are very distracted by the constant clicking on the computers, and it's easier for them to focus, especially if they don't like that on just a book. So, and I know you've heard me say this many times, but um, I'm a big proponent of having a written option for kids that aren't able to completely focus using the computer. We still have books. But they're pretty old. Uh, yeah. They've made a slight adjustment. So we actually got a physical copy of the new textbook and we compared it page for page. You know, we went through a few chapters. There are very, very negligible differences. Uh, a few problems have changed, a few page numbers have changed. But Mr. Fisher and the department said they felt confident being able to communicate those changes to students. So if you're in the digital version, we're on this site or this page. If you're in the paper copy, we're on page 37. Uh, they felt pretty confident that they would be able to do that. Now, as we roll these out, if there are large concerns, we're happy to come back to the buying board and say, hey, maybe we need to purchase 10, 20, whatever the number is for the textbooks. Can we purchase replacement textbooks for the Mr. Fisher. Mr. Fisher. Yeah, Yeah. So, I, I, I agree with you saying, and sort of in your saying, suit page, whatever. I also invest in that. We're busy. The kids get left behind and they go home. Yeah, and they do the wrong, they do the wrong, they're 
when we're off the cabin. So that's just that was what I also wanted to speak in from. Yeah, I'll be sure to communicate that, Mr. Fisher, and I'll make note to touch base with them early in the year to see how's it going and if we can need to acquire some tax. I don't think it's important. So, and I know maybe five people, you know, it's not statistically, but it does impact. I know. I know. students. It is a fraction of. Just so you're aware, our Mill Creek license will be up next year. So next year we'll be having a similar conversation for big ideas at Mill Creek. Uh, as Dr. Jim alluded to, we we will adopt this in 2017 for the high school, 2018 with Mill Creek. So there's seven years coming up. That's good. That's a good like reminder so that next year. Yeah. All right. Um, it's time to vote. Great rights. Aye. Daniels. Aye. Aye. Joyra. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Arnold. Aye. All right. Number 10, ELA curriculum curriculum approval. Our packet included a, sub, a summary and recommendation from Executive Director of Instruction, Ryan Bruder, regarding the proposed adoption of a new English language arts curriculum. This was shared with the board and discussed at the June 12, 2023 meeting. Numbers have been updated since that time. Would that the Board of Education approve the adoption of bookworms? What, um, Young five to two and collaborative literacy for grades three and four, and authorize the purchase of those curricular materials for a total cost not to exceed three hundred fifty thousand, with funds allocated from the DCS designated fund balance for curriculum. I'll second. Second. Okay. 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 Um, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Um, you mentioned this last time. I was here last week. No problem. That three fifths does that include the training for teachers? Uh, good question. So it would yes. it would include we would pay for the training, so the actual contract service, but there would be some summer stipends. So Sharon and I have been working on that budget. Uh, there would be some small stipends for staff to participate in asynchronous work over the summer. Yeah, no, I'm not worried about that. Yep. Yeah, you have to get paid to just go over there. Oh, does this include? It does. It does include the measure of the special yeah. periods that we're paying for what we're teaching them. Correct. Correct. So both uh, bookworms and collaborative literacy, we have put together a pretty comprehensive professional development plan uh, for this full year, uh, and that is included in that three hundred thousand. Good question. If you were concerned about us not getting books at the high school, we're getting a lot of books at elementary. So this is the option. It's not going to be a lot of books. Uh, these programs do have student workbooks that are consumable, so we've been working with the buildings to make sure that we can budget for funds for future years, and we make sure that there's, yep, actually handwriting in the department. But they're still not learning in person. We had a conversation about that. Still not doing it. Yeah, good question. Cursive wouldn't be part of this program, uh, and it's happening inconsistently. Any other discussion? Thank you, teachers, elders. It's easy to find out. It's never the podcast, but it's I know you can see it here. Thank you. Thank you. It, it is really with the teachers. They they did it. Incredible job. They took on a lot with this pilot, with this full year field test uh, and curriculum review, and really appreciate for all of them and the folks that have supported curriculum. Uh, you know, you guys a question about professional development. I just got confirmation earlier today, and it won't mean much to you, but it's very fun for those of us in this literacy world. Uh, Bookworms is a smaller company in the sense that they don't have tons and tons of trainers, and their best trainers had already been booked for this fall. 
And when I met with them uh, a few weeks ago, I jokingly said, well, how about Dr. Walpole? She is the woman. I mean, she wrote the curriculum. And, and they said, yeah, I think we could probably do that. And today we got confirmation that Dr. Walpole will be being the PD to our K2 staff. So they don't know that yet. If they're watching out there in YouTube world, they'll get that little nugget of information for everyone else. But uh, pretty excited that we'll be able to welcome Dr. Walpole to Dexter. It may be virtual, maybe in person. We're still figuring that part out. Uh, but our K2 teachers are going to get training this fall from the best. Uh, which is pretty exciting. During a school session? Maybe. It'll be during those that week prior to school starting, that professional development week. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very exciting. They'll, again, what, those K2 teachers will eat it up. They'll absolutely. Right. It's always a no if you don't ask. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. All right. Put it to a vote. Ms. Gangas? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Mr. Waron? Aye. Mr. Lovray? Aye. Mr. Arnold? Aye. Mr. Greater Act? Aye. All right. Moving on. Number 11. Class rank. Our packet includes. An executive summary regarding eliminating the use of class rank at DHS. This item was previously discussed at the May 22nd, 2023 meeting and at the June 15th policy committee meeting. I move the Board of Education suspend the use of class rank at the DHS and approve policy 2421 grading, 2430 class rank, for first reading as for second. Board. To be moved and seconded. For any discussion? I will say that I appreciated reading all of the um, the comments that came in from the community, um, especially the ones from the students who this who this really does that's what, the, who it affects really. Um, and then of course when we asked our student representatives, um, and I think at the May second twenty second, they were like, yeah, no, we don't need it. So I appreciated their um, perspective. So. Right. Yeah. Well, I know when I asked my graduate what he thought about it, he was like, I don't even know what my class rank is. So I had that information. So I know he was he was actually fairly high, but alphabetically it's low. We do have we have a lot of smart kids. Yeah. Um, look at your schools. This is actually more common. Kind of um, we've gone through the years of trying to decide. We, we used to list on uh, every report card the class rank. And we have kids that have three fives that are 147. And then the, I think it, even lower, which is, lower. which is surprising. Yeah. It's, so then we moved to not putting it on report cards, and then we actually just, it's available. And it's, um, we're seeing a trend in education in the, the most the most expensive schools to go to, they do not do it. And it does not impact their kids on college acceptance. In a lot of schools with high achieving kids, they don't want to because and it doesn't impact their kids on college acceptance. We have kids that are 75th that get in Michigan, get the fourth and third doesn't it's really about the individual. Comprehensive person, not about what they're eating. But we want our kids to do well. If they're motivated, we we also know that they're all taking an individual path. You look at an honors night, you see a kid that won all the welding parts, etc. That's really hard. Um, that's that's tough. You get kids that will be in all A's and AP or IB classes that they took that welding and they're very strong. Yeah. So I'm not very happy with that. Just so to be able to make this work is we heard our student reps at the last week pretty clear and the feedback was pretty clear. It creates a very false competition with their goal with college. I was supposed to have an analogy last night because I was asking some students at the baseball game and that got a like got a fracturing of responses. And I thought if all of our students are on a track team together, how do you put the distance, how do you rank the distance runners versus the scrubs? They run completely different races. And in the end, who's, who's going to say that the sprinter should be up higher than the distance runners? I mean, you could have an argument for both. And that's the same thing with you know kids that go to the IB program versus the consortium programs. They're not in the same academic spheres, and yet we're trying to rank them. Um, to help these kids excel individually. And I think that's, to me, that's the takeaway. And I think it shows um, 
you know, I think there was nearly a hundred kids that graduated as soon as a lot of, and, you know, how do you rank those kids? Um, you know, when they're all coming out with very similar um, grade points, even, I don't think taking away um, an arbitrary ranking system at this point takes away um, students' competitiveness. I think our students and our uh, our curriculum and the regular rigor that we have in our schools, I think that is enough to motivate kids. These kids are really motivated um, where they want to go in all aspects. And one of the things that I kept seeing in the feedback was recognizing the kids that work hard to achieve a higher class rank. And I think that, that is recognized in the honors, and um, there's a number of things that I, I know Dexter does. Um, I want to make sure that that continues, obviously, with the class rank. Right so I guess, you know, in terms of recognition, that was not, I, I, I don't know how the class rank really falls into recognition. So we have kids with 3.989 that are. 47. They worked really hard. They got one A minus or B plus. They worked really hard. And I, I think I said this at the last meeting, but I, and obviously, you know, I'm biased, but I was really impressed when I looked at the Sun Times and all of our students were listed because every single kid that graduated worked hard for that. It doesn't matter if they were ranked one or ranked 269. It's you know, they all graduated, they all walked, that was their achievement. And this is by far not the highest thing that they were going to do in their lives. There will be other uh, achievements that they will they will do. And so I I mean personally I started off real on the fence about the class rank and then after looking at you know how it, it how it boiled down that it was it wasn't until like 44th I think that <laughs> you saw non non four points. You know, and it was like you said, it's like three nine, blah blah blah. So, I mean, it's a spectrum. It's looked at all that first. But you see kids that you have two kids sitting next to each other, and one is great at math and science, one's great at English and history, one does debate, sports, one's in band, one's in drama, and the difference between the two we would never say is, you know, you're point zero zero one seven better. That's what they actually the system has. Yeah. Right. All right. Any other I Yes, David. You're good. No, I've done a lot of research. I, I missed last thing. Maybe four hours. Four hours. Um, you no. Know, I mean, keep the class rankings. Yeah. Maybe go to school. I've seen all the major variables. I can put all the research I've done. I've read all the emails too. So and so, higher ranking than them, and and this and that. But then, even the schools, kids get into other schools. I was talking about you know, this is not true. The extra thing. their child didn't get in, this is even called last year, didn't get any of the university public schools live there. Got it. Right. It's a crapshoot. So I don't really see that. 
and it made it. And there's many ways to write it. <laughs> um, I think I've expressed this before, but I still I don't see the value to have a class during in any part. Colleges don't use it. They look at the quality of the classes and that class of the stuff that we developed or we chose to take. So I think eliminating it comes along with our schedule to give kids more choices and what they can take things that they like. I'm not going to be pressured to take things that have a GPA just because it moves them up in the class ranks, which doesn't help them in the team. So this I think allows them allows kids to feel less pressure with a pretty bottom rank. No utility, and I think when I was in high school, I did remember people taking easy classes to add the information. I don't know if that's still a thing, but no idea if it's going to be, but I bet it is. So this eliminates the information that the classes are actually interested in. So we tend to see the denominator figure out how to take a multi class or some creative or intellectual part of the so that it doesn't count your GPA. So you change they're good at math. They're really good at math. Because we spent 120,000 on the bottom of it. No. But no bucks. All right. Shall we put it to a vote? Go call. Mr. Lundy? Yes. Is it where? Aye. Mr. Lowry? Aye. Mr. Arnold? Aye. Greater X? Yes. Angus? Aye. All right, uh, moving on to number 12, our packet included a layoff resolution This is presented for action this evening. I move the Board of Education to adopt the tax layoff resolution, placing the following special staff on layoff and services discontinued effective June 30th. Jackson Connor, Cecilia Gardner, and Parker Peterson. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? This represents after every staff we do and we appointments. What staff that we do not have positions for at this time and we do this a board policy and state law on how the decision is made. It's got to be made by effectiveness, which is defined as. Well, effectiveness with seniority is effective. So effective effectiveness is defined as their evaluation rating, um, the attendance, discipline, significant relevant contributions, and significant trainings, and then seniority is effective. It's unrelieved in some respects of the 14 reductions that some five people. Yeah, we may have one more in July, but that is very sure. Um, that 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 yes. Is that state? State? State law and court policy both outline, outline the same process that you look at effectiveness, you look at evaluation rating, um, for evaluation, attendance, discipline, significant relevant trainings. For example, you would play off. Um, Someone who was trained in, I'm trying to think of something else. Say you had two PE teachers, and one was a certified strength trainer, and one did not have that training, but she needed to teach weightlifting. So that significant training is the state cert, but it would be a factor you have to take into consideration. And then the last one is uh, oh, then significant contributions. That is so you that you don't have to lay off or drop your or ban. Like you just hired a new band director, which is a new senior. That if that law was set up, that the policy was set up, that if you got a reduction of music, but that's right, I play out the band director, if you didn't see it on the team, even though you didn't serve the And then the tag breaker is seen. Um, staff, uh, sorry, the, the actions is something that we had predicted. I guess last budget last year that there would be 
infections unless we had a significant increase in students. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. So it's, um, it's a matter of that. And we're not the only district that, that's in this position. The last time we did layoffs as the superintendent was the time districts were not hiring. So I'm confident teachers will find jobs. Um, that part, you know, it's so implied that. Um, so we're uh, confident that we will find jobs and we can come up with as we We had uh, another week today. Today, that we specialize certain or uh, some of them the summer. We have, yes, right now we have a counseling group of four people meeting in class. We have a counselor, we've had an intern school, another position, another job. So there's things that happen. But as of right now, we owe it to people. Um, just so you know, stay calm here. Any other discussion? Which was excellent roll call vote. Zoera? Aye. Bill Aubrey? Aye. Arnold? Aye. Greater X? Aye. Ms. Pangas? Aye. Drew Lundy? Aye. All right. Our last and added um, action item number 13 to add um, up to six classes um, until December for trustees to attend MASP classes. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I have a question. Is it do students ever attend sorts of they can they can perhaps sometimes take up three times a week? Um and then I don't know employers uh how to we should add students to the well, so I guess I said trustees. Um, well you can say we're two department the other yeah. thing I would say is we don't reimburse the board members, we pay for it. It's just a technicality. I don't know if that matters. Yeah. <laughs> if you wanted to. So the more interesting in the third time. If you want to make, take more class. <laughs> <laughs> included in the function. Then they have the option. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the motion I'm recording is to add um, for interested board members and student representatives to take up to six um, MASP classes. Yeah. At board expense. And just so everybody knows, the reason why Dan and I have talked about is we can still be reimbursed. We can stay at a lot of classes are. So, as long as that's an option for us, we want to monopolize that as much as possible because it doesn't come out of the district, it comes out of the school district. It's something that stays. So, that should be an automatic. Solomon is just Yeah, that's more expensive. It's $100 per class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's We really should encourage board members. It's perspective that we have Ohio State, Ohio, Covered. Doesn't hurt to hear it. Are we all now uh, certified to the Yeah, so kind of a yeah, approval or something. I know. I didn't even get like a certificate. Just for everything, I think my line of information. The real value is to just have to talk to the most important person. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, yeah, I did. But but they're they're good and you really see some of the true pain. And we had a lot of people that pain to see the pain of school that you go through. Uh, and how they overcome this. And you learn some of the challenges that we're having. Hopefully never come our way, but the things they have to do to overcome challenges. Really in this small school district program. Boston it's 80 miles black and plus other districts. And then really physical violence. Sports. I don't know curriculum violence, but I mean that is what's happening. Plus I mean you made a suggestion. When uh you forced people achieving levels of certification. I think it might be nice to say they join whatever other board members have already seen certification because I think it's an important message to the community the level of training board members have had, not just the instant that somebody gets something new. Right. Anyone more to special questions? Okay. Thank you.
So by law, we need to have a, um, a sex education supervisor and advisory board co-chair, a parent co-chair, an educator, another educator, a community health two community health professionals, at least one local clergy, um, at least two students who are in the district, um, at least three parents who have children in the district without that are not employees. And then at least four parents, or sorry, three parents who can they can be employees, and at least four more who are not employed by the district. Because you run into unique spots like um, if Ryan's on it, child in the district. If Craig was on it, child in the district. I have the same problem. So you have to break down the group enough. Um, and what happens is the board will have to appoint after we go through the process the individual names. For the group. So I know we set up uh, Ryan and Hope to work on uh, some information on the website. We do. We have an interest form that uh, when the board is ready, we are ready to share with the community uh, to gauge interest and help determine. Uh, we have interview questions. We have rubric for interviews if it's helpful for the board to utilize those in the selecting process. Uh, we have a general idea of the number of meetings and candidates for this upcoming year. Uh, but we will need the board to help appoint or approve a process. Uh, um, however much the board wants to be involved in that process, you let us know uh, whether it's become you with recommendation and you sign off, or if you would like to sit at the table for interviews. Of course, that's a possibility. So, is there a current study that would sense to represent us, or do we just create a landmark study? Um, we can go a couple of routes. We could use an existing board committee or well, let's start off. The first thought we had on the process, or our first idea was what we would do is we have information on the website, we have an application set up that we can send out to the community and both our parent community, our staff community, and the overall community to solicit names of which role they believe they can fill. And then based on the roles, we can set up an interview process. The hardest ones to fill sometimes and we have to explain the commitment. The hardest ones to fill sometimes are your chair, your co-chairs, your health professionals. We've already spoken with the ministerial association, so we have a couple of volunteers already. Um, and those are two of the hardest. And then students are sometimes great. Or uh, the approved self process. But then I think it's probably be useful if we have three board. You know, two places. Yeah, everything that we get from, uh, so the, at the ISD, we do have an individual who oversees this, and she has always utilized the CAB, the Central Education Advisory Board. Uh, everything in my tenure in this role has been CAB. I'm not sure if it previously was called the Reproductive Health Committee, either locally or at the state level. Well, we actually Part have two that. different policies. We have one on reproductive health, and we have one on sex education. So what's happened is in the state law, it's in two places in using both words, but defined a little differently. So we run into it, the, the current language is sex education advisory or by the state. That's state, all MDE, all the different groups. This is what they were referring to it as. Um, so what happens is we, we got to pick one. We had, it was called the Reproductive Health Committee. But it was, it met the Sex Education Advisory Board requirements. Um, well, I just recall a lot of parents thinking that we were going to teach their kids how to have sex, which I mean, we were going to teach the, the, the fundamentals of, you know, what happened, but it's not like we're going to be practicing sex in class. So I just, you know, there was a lot of good statements being made. Do I to avoid that? Right. Um, the by law, 
a district has to choose. They do have to teach um, sexually transmitted diseases, HIV, and HIV. Um, abstinence has to be taught. Um, the trick is that we have to teach about sexually transmitted diseases, but then it's up to the local board and whether you're going to talk about the actual sex. Um, that's the trick. So it's like a nice political move that goes into a state law. That the practicality is okay. Now we got to figure out how we do this. So we have we we have information that we can explain publicly on what it is we already do and have to do. Um, this one page sheet talks about the mission and it explains kind of the interest, and so someone can decide if they want to participate. But we also have the requirements of what we have to cover, and I think that's important. That'll be part of the early on work with the group and for applicants to help them understand what is really on the table, what is not. So what do we have to teach? And then if we change that, what are we allowed to change? And then also we have to opt in opt out. We all we have to allow an opt out. We have to allow parents to watch the lessons. It's often really uncomfortable for their child when they watch the lessons, but it's uncomfortable for other children if parents in that class too. We have to think that's always a navigation. Parents have the right to opt out. Parents have the right to preview materials. Parents also have the right to observe a lesson. Uh, we as the local get to determine what that looks like. So it may not be in their own child's classroom, but they do have that right to observe any of this. Now this is during the middle of their school years. Um, so right. Yeah. 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 We the first piece we have to find are the uh, the adults that fit the different roles, and then students. We have thirty four hundred students to pull from, um, so that's a little quicker process. But we want to pick students that aren't going to graduate soon. Because the process, then you're always changing. So you want to pick probably a middle schooler to get years. So what are our action items? I know it's not an action item. So what do we what do we need to do the next step? Establish the next step. Yeah. The exact process. So, so do we form a committee of board members to advise the message? Well, could you do that on the process? So the real question, the first, so the question is, and next month that we have to. I was going to say next, we next month. Committees. So it could be an ad hoc committee that's appointed in one part of the role. There's there's a few things that have to happen. We need to solicit interest from community members, all parts of the community. Then we have to work on selection of actual people. Then that's where I think the board committee would make sense. The question is, if we went out and we have this one pager that the board, it's in the board packet, I believe, I can see it. And we can have the website updated with an image report. Then we can start that process as we work through are we going to do interviews? Because we really need to give it's we got a holiday weekend coming, we're gonna hit a weird period of communicating. So this week's tough to communicate and think that you're gonna get any turnaround about it. Next week's even worse, and then the week after is we'll probably get some actual turnaround time. So we're looking at weeks out of getting people to start soliciting. When do we have to we really should have it as soon as possible, but we, yeah. I'm just afraid um, of the well, is, we have they have to meet annually. This is a um, legal requirement. Yes, they have to meet annually. Oh, no. that. When is there a legal requirement? On the yeah. Yes, we already are supposed to have a committee, but our members have dropped off and retired, mm -hmm. so we have to. Yeah. We've missed our deadline. So thanks for <laughs> The we are the they're not rewriting the whole book. No, they're doing it. But no, well, we do need to review our materials. We have materials that were written. Uh, we have VHS tapes. We can't get VCR. Yeah. 
<laughs> we have some work to do. A joke, really, but I had to work to acquire a copy for our fourth grade teachers. We were starting that process that went completely awry. Yeah. We are not doing that again. That's a question on the flyer. You say, parents, you're in the music parent, which does not be employed by a school district. That's a school district with ECS. Exactly. So they work in the school. The idea is that we get balanced, and it's not just people that work in school. Okay, so any school. Okay. It's all these about written because the school probably recruited a lot of parents and teachers of other districts, and we had to make sure that. It's meant to get balance of perspectives. And ideally, that's what's going to get to the best results. So you have one ministerial representative. And sometimes they'll come as a parent, sometimes they won't. It's, that's the challenge. It's not your parent. <laughs> We joke. There was there's a there's a deacon there's a deacon with a um, he's got a medical degree yes. and he had kids at so at one point he did so and that's the other thing with because they're appointed you can't have just high school parents and you can't generally just have kids or parents who have a senior because they're going to be appointing someone else after. We are at a point we've had a really good solid committee that have been on for a decade plus. And during the pandemic, most of the members have either changed jobs or retired or their kids are graduated. So we're at that place that we need to hit. And we hit the reset button. It's time to so they're, they're doing the entire school age. That's the role. Okay, in high school. That, that breakdown you showed me a couple months ago when I asked you to give me a rundown. That's what they're reviewing that entire process. That um, could be a potential outcome of the committee. The committee, one of the first things they would need to do is establish its goals for the year. And so if it would be to facilitate a curricular review, then that would be a desired outcome. But we're hearing from some community members, teachers, and folks that are not on the committee, the committee is not existent at this point, is that they would like a curricular review, but that would need to be determined by that committee. Yeah. What's the timeline that we're triggering? As they step down, we're supposed to replace. So it's their choice. Well, the, the yeah. process would include that and everything, um, some other district, and then pro their process included a timeline. He asked you to do two to three years. Well, it seems like that would be determined. Just decide what you're doing. Because you have to keep it. The other issue is if you don't set up something and somebody leaves, does that mean that determines the category? Or can you do something that has enough turnover to have one more question? You have to have the categories represented. I understand. Um, and the board, you know, has to. I mean, it'll probably be on a somewhat regular basis. We get some turnover that just happens. It's quite a good hope that people turn it over. So, yeah. ideally, the one challenge we're going to see in this current um, cultural environment we have. These meetings are subject to the open meetings that they're done in public because they're appointed by the board to make some decisions bring recommendations to the board. So it is going to be a challenge for some of the roles to fill of people that are comfortable publicly being on this kind of board. And it's kind of and they have committees. Can this committee have some committee? That's a good question. Um, what we're seeing happen around the country, we probably need to keep it as an open meeting and have the group meet collectively and figure out what is um, what is a tangible amount where it can get started as they learn to hold. Because it, it has potential, like what we saw in the last three right before the pandemic is things went completely astray. And we didn't have information that out, so the information was shared that was inaccurate, and you can't change the inaccurate information and help people understand that there's no way we would ever do this. Um, so we need to figure out where are the safe spot, safe places to get started. 
and build is there trust something for us to see how the should be having a variety of perspectives? But if you have a lot of work to do, it might be a lot more efficient way of getting through a bunch of raw materials. Something for somebody to consider. We just have to, we're going to have to work with attorneys on to be exactly this is under tremendous scrutiny across the country in every school district, and we need to hit a reset button and start to deal with it, including chairs, co chairs, everyone. That was my question. How does, it, does, it, do, does the board, and I guess that's part of what we have to decide, um, appoint the chair and the co chair, or does it be a We have a staff, we need a staff co chair. And we have one staff member who actually is self certified that is willing to do it. I'm not sure the name yet because we haven't gotten that far, but most that are going, I don't want to do that. We don't want to take the time there. Yep. I think there's enough people in our community that would be I think so. willing to do this. I, I, my biggest thing is just making sure that it's open for. And, and enough people know about the opportunity to apply. So it's difficult. Um, I mean, we have the emails and like a listserv for we get the students. Yeah. I just want to make sure that it's broadcast to the community so that enough members are able to apply. The churches have already shared that they would share information. Uh, we'll get it. We can talk to the newspapers and get some information. There's, yeah. there's ways to get information out of it. We have social media. I hope has great communication systems. Um, we'll use all of them. When it's, it's about it's time. I thought you said it's time. You know, it's been past time, but there's things you can brush and screw up, and there's things that you can be thoughtful and make sure that you don't create problems for you to start. Which is why I was questioning. Yeah. Good evening. For us, we must write what we need to do when it comes I think at the next board meeting, does make sense to appoint an ad hoc committee that would work. Um, I would like to get the information out sooner than later so that we can start getting applicants. We know no matter what we do process wise, we're going to have to start letting people but show the can't do that. I think based on the discussion now, would anybody have apprehension to us starting to solicit for applications and getting information? Done? Time on it versus waiting and then right. just writing out the process. So, it's so hard for me to say, yes, on how to see that. Some people are going to think we're like we're burying it, we um, do it right during this vacation. So, I'd suggest that the um, after like the vacation window, the holiday. Yeah, like, yeah. Just like the weeks, July ends. Yeah, that's right. Why can't we just keep on going multiple times? Yeah, yeah but, but launch it after the vacation week yeah, because yeah. lots of people are already after that week. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. So that would be July. That's that's yeah. yeah. So I would launch it then and then repeat then get out. If you launch it before that, it's not going to get a lot of people, and some people will feel that we were. You're okay with that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. As much as I'd like to get it out this week, the reality is people are they're not watching. Yeah. So it's just a fine reason. Uh, we would likely add some more information about how folks could apply or express interest. So we would add a little bit more information about that. But yes, for the most part, this is the draft flyer. Can you put the website here? Yep, uh, and not the flyer itself, the A through K standards, which is underlined, it would be hyperlinked. So people could click on that, it would take them to the document. Okay. Uh, that was the document that Dr. Chen just mentioned that we showed to clergy, and it was really helpful for them to see, oh, these are the requirements. Right. So the people are going to they ask, they'll ask another question. Okay. Yeah, is it just using the word students instead of people? Absolutely. <laughs> That's in the law. Oh, they define student pupil. Pupils are actually enrolled in school. Okay, I'm just no, we can we can add we can yeah we'll we just put students we can yeah they're pupils I know I know the students are pupils there was some case somewhere 
So <laughs> what's the same as the number? Yeah. I just wanted to let everybody know that this information plus that this is where we'll put more information on the website under curriculum. Now, if anybody asks you to keep them that age, I'll have to keep them. Yeah, like this other one, you can stay in that It's not that. Yeah, just say available here. So you look to the last text that we're going to publish it for the first time. The, 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 the SEAB information, the very basic information, is already on our website. and. Um, we will post the link there for the application and July 10th will <laughs> announce it and then we'll continue to send it out. But that'll be like the announcement. It's not hidden, it's there. I'm just telling you that if anybody contacts you, that information is on the website under curriculum. I think it's important that it maybe it's already there, but to me, it doesn't come across that. To me, when I read this, it seems that what they're developing a curriculum or they're, they're having to go out and start. Scratch, but they're really reviewing our materials and making recommendations for changing. And I know it says reviewing and recommending materials, but I don't know if the reviewing part is instead of. You want to say reviewing short term materials? Current school materials. Existing materials. Right. It's not like they have to come up with a whole new and then, yeah, you're writing something at points and saying, this seems like an open long process. Yeah. Right. Could turn into it. Well, that's the, uh, it could, but that's, yeah. but that's how they do it. If you start reviewing current materials, they can put them in the side and that's what they want to do. Yeah, because a lot of parents don't understand what's already in place. They don't know right. what we're using for them. That it's not that, well, at least the past proposal was not that they will change the what to. So. Damn, I just want to make sure that we know not already in here. Well, like, yeah, I know it's in here, but it's not here. And it boards with scale. Sure. Because, no, because you know the deal. Because you're going to make this come off. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have some case issues. Sure. That's required by state. Right. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.